that means, you know, anytime somebody's in pressure financially, yep. that often flows on to the next person. So if somebody has to pay a bill and they can't, they start looking, you know, who owes me money? Yeah. You know, and- I, I'm living that life. <laughs> You know, that's the problem because, yeah, one person's under pressure. So, therefore, you know, that it flows on. It's exactly a ripple effect. Hey, let's talk about Australian stuff, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. We've got tax coming up. Yes. All right? Now, the smart people would have already been months ahead of this, getting their tax organised. Uh, clearly, I'm not one of those smart people, <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll be chasing some advice after the show. But now is the time to jump right at it, right? I actually think, yeah. I mean, planning for me should really happen in May. Okay. Um, because you do not want to leave it to the last week in June mm. because there's just not enough time to do it. You no, know, your, not- your accountant is inundated with calls oh, yeah. uh, on the 30th of no. June and uh, a lot more people are leaving it to the last minute. In fact, it was interesting. I was chatting to my accountant last week and mm. I was saying, how's the ATO going to, because they do a lot of the relationship between their clients and the ATO. Sure. Um, and they said that, yeah, they're getting more restless um, mm. in terms of, you know, business owners trying to pay their tax and they're going, no, nah, we're not going to accept those payment terms and this sort of stuff. It's that really? other thing. I said, oh, that's really smart. You know, putting business owners out of business and we have them on welfare and the government keeps paying more for it. I mean, it's just it's just a vicious well, circle. here's me going to get political <clears throat> for a moment. Okay. I have noticed a particular issue when it comes to this government compared to the previous one. Under the Labor government, they seem to be a lot more threats to business owners. There seems to be a lot more need of the cash flow, right? Now, I think that the books are so out of balance with the Australian Labor Party that they have a cash flow problem. I really do. Well, they do. And it was the Liberals who spent all the money during COVID. Oh, no question about it. Oh, look, both of them, like, you know, the old... And the state governments. Yeah, are you right wing, are you left wing? Do you know what? Yeah, I just want to shoot the bird out of the sky. The fact is, both of them are as bad as each other. But I'm just seeing... I'm seeing a particular aggression coming from the Labor government, and and to me that suggests that there's problems in. Paradise. Oh, there's cash flow mm. issues, absolutely. Mm. You know, I, 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 there's no question. I mean, you've got the, you've also got the uncertainty of what's going on in the world, and we'll get into that in, in just a few moments. The absolutely. whole game is changing on the international front, Huge. so that that means you know, anytime somebody's in pressure financially, yep, that often flows on to the next person. So if somebody has to pay a bill and they can't, they start looking, you know, who owes me money? Yeah, you know, and- I, I'm living that life. <laughs> you know, that's the problem because yeah, one person's under pressure. So therefore, you know that it flows on. It's exactly a as you said. It's, it's, and it's a real problem. And a lot of it's caused by the banks as well. Um, and my big concern is the banks and the government are working together too Not closely that, these days. So. But let's let's pull back for a minute. If you're an employee, mm-hmm. it's there's not a lot you can claim these days, right? My, and, and that's that's just the reality, because they. About ten years ago, they closed a lot of the stuff that you could claim. You know, sure. you know, uniforms. Mm-hmm. Yes, generally, if that's for in line with work. If you are needing to pay for education, that you're already in a job that already provides your income, that's generally claimable. Um, you know, it's protective wear, depending yep. on what industry you're in. That there are all those sort of usual type claims and of course for the mum and dad investor who are into the investment property um, they claim everything at expenses and holding that property um, as well as and deduct that from their income sure. from that a lot of accountants are into this negative gearing i think it's a terrible strategy personally okay. Okay. Um, and the reason i do that is because you never do an investment to make a tax break you do an investment because you think it'll make you money that's right. um, and i think a lot of accountants get that the wrong way around okay. and i think that's something to bear in mind if you get a tax break that's a bonus yeah, um, right. it shouldn't be the reason to do an investment but yeah primarily i think a lot of people do that to lower their tax right yeah, I mean... The problem is getting caught out in that game. If you lose your job, then yep. you're stuck with a big bill. Um, True. And you're not going to be geared. If you uh, are in a situation where, the you know, we had a flat real estate market mm-hmm. for a long time um, and everybody else is winning but the investor. So, you know, <laughs> the bank's winning, the sure tenant's are. winning, the government's winning because they have to provide housing for the tenant. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like who's paying the bill here? The, the if it goes wrong, okay. you know, the tenant goes, see you later. The property manager goes, we'll get another client. Mm-hmm. Um, the banks go, hey, we'll find another loan to lend out. It's the, the, the landlord that's taking the risk there. Of course. Okay. I, I, I sit here. I'm Aaron Bloggs, right? Okay. I've got the uh, the nice pay-as-you-go job, right? You know, maybe work for the government. <laughs> um, well, honestly, how can I lower my tax? If I, I'm pay-as-you-go, 
I've got a just a normal salary, normal wages. It doesn't vary, kind of thing. What can I do? Generally, the, the rule is it, any expenses that cost you to generate an income are, mm. are deductible. Okay, that that's basically the, the premise of how it works. Sure. So you know, if you, as I mentioned before, if you have required to have a uniform, great. Yep. If you are required to travel for work mm -hmm. uh, outside of uh, your local area it's not yep. from home to the office it's to uh, you know over east or that sort of stuff Those well, hang on, oh, hang on, on that front well mm. we're well, well, okay now for the last you know three or four years we've had a lot of people working from home mm -hmm. right so now they're encouraging people back in the office now if some are working at home and some are working in an office surely in my eyes the person who is driving to the office should get a tax deduction for that in my yeah, eyes. In your <laughs> eyes, yes. Is that the eyes and rulings of the ATO? No, certainly so, not. That's you know, why that, that works That's there. the game you're playing. Yeah. And, and, and well, I agree with you in principle because, you know, if you do work from home, you can claim a certain amount of office expenses from your home. Well, yeah. Certain, if you meet certain criteria, you mm -hmm. know, and electrical and electricity and utilities and all that sort of sure. stuff. Um, Even a rental um, aspect as well of how much space you yeah, have. Yeah, if you have a room dedicated to an office and that yeah. sort of stuff, that's what they're looking at. How many hours a week do you spend in, in that? that space etc so sure yeah okay so i mean the days of having a, a side business another business whatever that you can you know use for expenses is that is that still a viable thing for a pay-as-you-go person or? absolutely i think it's the best way to get in terms of tax breaks it's sure. a way to the, the biggest difference between the wealthy and poor is this is mm -hmm. that the the poor mm -hmm. um pay tax first and then they receive their income yes whereas the wealthy pay for their expenses first and then they pay tax yeah and it's the difference between what we call post-tax income and pre-tax income absolutely and so to really get wealthy you want to play in the game of being in pre-tax income uh, in terms of knocking off your expenses so as a business owner uh they can or investor mm -hmm. they can all the expenses that you know cost to generate that can be written off yep. so internet you know yeah write that yeah. off computers write that off um it, depending on the business of, of course. course you know tools often vehicles mm -hmm. a lot can be done in, oh, that, in yeah. that aspect there's a reason why the most popular vehicle on australian roads is dual cab ute right <laughs> um well they're now wanting to tax that oh yeah but it's all right it's all right just get in, get in your electric car mate it'll be fine <laughs> not gonna be drama everybody will be happy shiny happy yeah. how to get people offside oh you know what <laughs> i just right. every time i hear I'm like, like shoot oh, yourself with the foot policy on oh, it is crazy you're the labor government who your entire premise apart from the fact that people don't know you're socialists right okay <laughs> but your entire premise of existence is that you look after the worker you're the workers no, party. working class man oh yeah yeah jeez <laughs> oh, cue the chip Bars. like but it is that's the reality right yeah. okay and you're taxing a ute mm -hmm. right the own and this is as i say what most men and women out there who have got uh you know have got their own business they've got the dual cab ute for that very reason mate like it is just insane um yeah that that's the compromise they make that is why they make dual cab ute's when when i was a boy like i remember i had a commercial vehicle many many years ago and in fact i've had many over the years right because i've been in business and done physical things mm -hmm. right so okay and you still have one i still have one exactly mm -hmm. right now and mine's very fancy i do this to wind the windows <laughs> up right but that, that's kind of my point is they used to be very sort of basic and rudimentary and and, and do the job right okay yeah. plastic everything now you get in them it's like hello yeah how luxurious is it how nice is it? it's got you know like it's got a playstation stuck to the dashboard i mean it's just everything's at your fingertips everything's lovely right and that's because obviously people are using them as tax deductions people are using the everyday car as their work car and um yeah there's a lot of positives to that and if you're looking at the environmental thing that's a good thing because you know you've got one vehicle rather than having to have a specialized work vehicle as well so there's a lot of positives there right now for a labor government one for the people for the worker Mm -hmm. to go and go, oh, we're going to tax the hell out of it. And you know what you can do? I've got this great alternative for you. You can buy a Chinese ute, right, okay, from our sponsors at <laughs> the CCP. Uh, it's the Australian Labor Party, obviously, not, <laughs> not, not Edge. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the Labor Party is sponsored by the CCP, right? So, okay, you can buy a ute from them. And no problem. Now, if you can get the same thing in a petrol or diesel, you'll be paying 55000 But it's okay. If you buy it in electric, it'll be $90,000, right? And it will be absolutely, completely throw away, throw in the bin, nothing to see here in a maximum of five years. Wow, that's great for the economy. That's great for the environment. Gee, that's great for everybody, right? Mm. Just drives me batty. Mm. Bad politics makes 
bad finance. I mean, built to last, mm-hmm. and 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 that's a huge concern. And most people aren't calculating what is the resale cost of those oh. those special EVs. And yeah. I don't think they really work for Australia, but that's no, just my opinion. Don't. And I'm not completely against electric cars. Like, no. uh, you know, if you're in if you're in the middle of a city and you need a city car, something you know, small or whatever. I'm not against. I, I can actually see some value in that. Yeah. Um, as they push more and more people into the cities and more and more extension cords running out through the trees to plug these things in, it gets a bit ludicrous. Mm. But um, but I can see value. Look, there's uh, you know we're here in the city area and they have those little electric scooters around the place where you can get on one and you ride to your location and you, then you dump it there. It's so dangerous. Oh, I want to give it a go. I'm looking forward. So to dangerous. It. Yeah, I've well, seen so many accidents. Yeah, on those. I heard about so many accidents. I was like, yeah. Oh well, just hold my beer because <laughs> I'm coming. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, there's one down the road. It's bright orange. I mean, it's I edge. know, but they come go on. so fast and it's like, oh, you come off that thing. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, I know, but I, I built I've years of developing this. I'll bounce. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> 